YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be talking about my path to med school and what ended up what I went through to come to med school. Um, so I'm going to start with sort of the end of high school, college, and then ultimately the application process. So I went to a small not small, but I was, I'm from a small town in South Jersey and I went to a public high school. It didn't really help me much in terms of getting ready for college, but nonetheless, I went to college. Um, I went to Monmouth University and I started in the fall of 2013 and I graduated in 2017. So I'm pretty much a traditional student. I didn't take any time off between med school and college um, but a lot of people do so if you think that there's something wrong with that there's not um, uh, there's so many people in my class that took um, one two three ten years off between college and med school and everyone's journey is different but I knew from the start that I wanted to be a doctor and I just wanted to go straight through but so yeah so I came into college as a biology major because that's what I thought you needed to major in to go to med school. But I ended up switching to chemistry because I realized you didn't need it and I liked chemistry better than bio. So um, at the end of my sophomore year, I switched to a chemistry major. Um, and as long as you take the prereqs that you need to get into med school, you're fine. So um, right from the start, I was basically on track. So my freshman year, I took biology, microbiology, and chemistry. My sophomore year, I took organic chemistry and anatomy and physiology. And then my junior year, I took um, biochemistry. And then that's basically everything that you need to be ready for the MCAT. Um, I also forgot to mention you need psychology and sociology for the new MCAT. Um, so I took all those classes and then I started studying for my MCAT, I want to say spring semester of my junior year. Some people start earlier, some people start later. It's all up to when you want to take the MCAT and when you want to apply. So I started spring semester of my junior year and then I took uh, my first MCAT June 2nd of like after my junior year was over so the summer of my before my senior year so now I said my first MCAT because I ended up having to take it again luckily I took it not super early but early enough that once I got my score back in July of my of that summer I saw that I needed to take it again if I wanted to be a competitive applicant because I didn't do well my first time so I also forgot to mention that I did sign up for a prep class and I'm now, I know a lot of you are thinking that they're really expensive and you can't afford it. And I was in the same boat. I couldn't afford to take a prep course for the price that they were. I ended up taking Kaplan and the normal price for Kaplan I believe is like $2,400. But they actually have a program if you are a low income, if you're from a low income household. So you can apply for the program and depending on your GPA and um, if you meet the requirements, you can get 60%, 50 or 60% off of their program. So I ended up only having to pay $900 versus $2,400 and I was able to split those that up into payments to pay for the class. So I started the Kaplan course in the spring semester and I ended right before um, I took my first MCAT and then I saw that I didn't do well so they allow you to take the course again so I started studying immediately after I got my score for my MCAT again and I retook it the end of August and that is super late because then you don't get your score back until the end of September and for those of you who don't know um, applications for med school open in June 1st, the year before you're going to enter. So I entered med school fall of 2017 and applications open in June of 2016. So everything is on a rolling basis. So if you want to um, basically have a shot, you have to apply early. That's what they can tell you. Even the best applicant, if they apply late, their chances get extremely diminished. And I feel like 
that I, I mean I wasn't the best applicant I was pretty average average applicant but um it was like I was basically pushing um my chance by applying but I was like you know what I'm just going to apply I got my score back at the end of September and I said I'm going to apply with this and if I don't get in I'll just try again next year but um, so I ended up submitting my secondary applications uh, I want to say the first week in October and I was like oh, I'm, I'll be lucky if I even get an interview so I ended up getting an interview for the school I attend now NJMS like October 21st and I was shocked because I didn't think I was going to get an interview and if I did not until like way later so the way it works is that let's say a med school gets 5,000 applicants and then they could only interview 500 people the first people that apply are going to be the first people to get interview spots so if people applied in June they're gonna be having interviews super early and then they're gonna get accepted and then if your interview is later you have less chance of getting accepted so I got a early enough interview that my chances were still good of getting in um, so I got my interview for NJMS October 21st and I ended up getting accepted November 11th I believe and that feeling was just surreal it was the best feeling in the world I was on cloud nine I got a phone call on Sunday night I was writing a paper from the Dean of Admissions telling me that I was accepted and I was just jumping all over the place I was so excited my friend actually recorded me it was the funniest thing but yeah so let me backtrack to applying to med school now and paying for your MCAT. So the MCAT is, when I took it, it was $300. I don't know if it's still that, but there's actually also a program for um, low income households called the fee assistance program. So if you can't can afford to like pay the full price for the MCAT and then also to apply to each medical school is expensive. You have to pay uh, application fees for both the primary application and then each school has their own secondary application. So that can rack up like thousands of dollars just to apply to school plus $300 to take the MCAT and I had to take it twice. So the fee assistance program, um, they basically made my MCAT $115 instead of $300 and then they paid for up to 15 schools for me to apply to. So. A lot of people only apply to like 8 to 10, I think, but it allowed me to apply to 15 schools and I ended up getting interviews for, I believe, 6. And I attended 4 of those interviews and the fir my first interview was at NJMS and that was also my first acceptance. So I, as soon as I got accepted, I knew that I wanted to go there so that I was able to rule out some interviews for schools that I didn't want to go to over NJMS. Um, so yeah, so I got accepted early enough that I knew I was gonna that I was gonna be a doctor, um, and I was gonna go to med school. So yeah, it was pretty. I got pretty lucky. Like a lot of my interviews weren't until way later, the following year, and I know my chances. I knew my chances of getting in were like slim. So that's why for some, for those two schools, I didn't even bother going to the interview. Like if I have an interview in April. What are really my chances of getting in when they've been interviewing people since like July or August and so many people have already been accepted they probably only have a like a handful of seats left so I just didn't even bother especially because I, I loved NJMS so much that I was just like I'm gonna go here so um, yeah that was my path so uh, I'm basically a traditional student I would call myself but if you decide later in college that you want to be a physician don't let that discourage you you can always catch up take summer classes if you hadn't taken any of the prerequisites and stay on top of your work um, I wasn't like a spectacular student I had a pretty average GPA um, so it's like you don't have to be like a 4.0 perfect MCAT student to get into med school. Anybody can do it as long as you have that drive and determ determination. Admissions boards are going to see that and you, you can like follow your dreams. So um, my word of advice is that it's an incredibly tough journey to just get here. But the feeling of being here, it's just it's a blessing and 
it's so fulfilling to just know that I'm like my future is gonna be helping people like helping patients so if you even have a slight inclination that you possibly want to be a physician and you're in college right now and you're like not a science major don't make don't let that discourage you. you there's always time there's so many people in my class that took time off from it's a gap year so don't feel like you have to go straight through because honestly if I can go back I probably would have taken a gap year because I feel like I just threw myself into med school after college was over so a gap year or two would have been nice to travel because honestly I'm not going to be done school for another four years and by then my 20s will be gone. A lot of people say that when you if you start med school right after college say goodbye to your 20s because you're not going to finish until your later 20s and then you still have residency which is specialty training and that's like three to seven more years and then by then you're like old you're not old but yeah so that was my path to med school and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button and i'll be making more videos on med school so if you guys have any questions um, that I didn't answer in this video, just leave a comment and let me know. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed.